Hey guys, today's Q&A is about capacitors. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Alan. And I'm Brennan. And today's question is uh, all about capacitors and it's from Power Cell Man from YouTube. I like that one. It's a cool name, huh? Yeah, pretty sweet. And so in the video, you're gonna see us show you how to charge a capacitor. We're gonna show you the connections on a capacitor and how it works. And we're gonna talk about capacitors more than just, you know, showing you how to hook them up. So we're gonna start by showing you how to charge the capacitor with the charging tool that's included with capacitors. And so when you guys buy these things, don't just rip open the package because you're excited about this tube. Actually look inside and you'll find that they all come with a charging tool. And then you don't have to bother the manufacturers and ask them, how do I charge this? Because the instructions are already there and they're clear. But we're gonna show you how to do it as well. All right guys, so you're gonna wanna use this tool. Now, um, in some cases, you can just hook up the capacitor to obviously power and ground. Uh, but in most cases, depending on the capacitor, you can actually damage the cap by not slowly charging it up to its full potential. Uh, in this case, we're gonna go ahead and utilize our excess power battery to charge this cap today and show you what it looks like when it's fully charged using this tool and uh, be able to see the actual voltage readout on the digital cap itself. Now obviously if the capacitor that you purchased does not have a digital display, uh, we'd still recommend using a charging tool like this or a test light so you know when it's finished. So as Brendan's starting to make the first couple simple connections, note that this is a polar capacitor, which means that it's gonna have a designated pole for positive and a designated pole for negative. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that those are hooked up properly. So most of those are always labeled at the top. And uh, you can see Brendan's already got the positive and the negative now connected to the cap itself. With the leftover two leads, you're gonna go ahead and connect that to the battery, which you'll see in a second. So in this case, this capacitor has a, basically a distribution block built in for positive and negative. So it doesn't matter which one you use to charge the cap. So just to put that out there for you, because you may be confused, why do I have two inputs or two outputs on each side? So we're gonna go ahead and we got our 12 volt power source here. We have our charging tool in line to the cap and to the capacitor itself. And here we got a negative and a positive. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach negative. So in this case, this particular charging tool is gonna to have a green light that's gonna let us know when it's done charging. When is the, the light hot? stops illuminating, you know the capacitor is fully charged. As well, off the display, you'll see it slowly over time start trickling up in voltage to approximately around 13 volts. Yep, so as you see here, we're starting to get to nine and a half. It will slowly increase and that's the whole thing about this. It's gonna slowly charge the capacitor up until it's fully charged. All right guys, so you can see here our charging tool, the green LED light is now completely off. We're approximately a little bit over 13 volts. So we now know our capacitor is fully charged and ready to be installed. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and disconnect the positive lead here. The negative lead, don't let those touch. And we're gonna go ahead and remove the charging tool. And now, basically on some capacitors, you guys will notice that it will have a third terminal. Just like an aftermarket car amplifier, the car amplifier is gonna want ground, hot from your battery, and a remote turn on. In some cases, depending on the cap, it will have a third leg or a third post for a remote turn on just for the LCD display to turn off when the vehicle's off and to turn on when the vehicle's on. Now in this case, this particular capacitor, once the vehicle's off and the voltage drops below 12 volts, the LCD display will finally turn itself off. So you're not gonna have to worry about it draining your battery. That's perfectly normal. So now we're gonna go ahead and show you how to connect it in line to your aftermarket amplifier um, utilizing our table car. Then if you haven't ever seen a table car, you've seen one now. This thing is awesome. But I do wanna point out before we start making the connections is that there is no in put an output on a capacitor. Even though it looks like there's two terminals here, we can have uh, two negatives here and two positives there, this is simply a distribution block. So there's no which one do I hook up to what, there's no input, there's no output. 
whatever you hook up here is the same here. It's, it's a common block. All right, guys, so we're gonna go ahead and attach our leads from our battery here. Uh, today we're just using basic speaker wire as our hot and ground. Our battery is grounded to our chassis, our table car. This thing's got a lot of horsepower, by the way. We gotta be careful with it. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and connect the capacitor basically in line with our battery here. So we're gonna have our main charging wire coming off. We do recommend when it comes to the ground, utilizing a separate grounding point within the chassis than actually the, for the amplifiers going. Um, reason being it can create a ground loop or some type of noise or feedback through the system, which you're not gonna want. So we're gonna go ahead and ground this. And you may not always have your capacitor right next to your amplifier anyway. It may be mounted in a, a, a little bit of a different location. So chances are your ground may not be in the exact same spot anyway. So we're gonna go ahead and ground our capacitor to the chassis. But before you do that, oh. you gotta make sure your ground is clean. Make sure you get all that paint off of there. All right, now that Alan got all the paint off the uh, table car, we're gonna go ahead and ground the capacitor. All right, so that was the first step. Now we got it hooked up. We're gonna go ahead and connect it to our amplifier. Now that's where the distribution block comes into play. Now if your capacitor does not have a built-in distro block for positive and or negative, we're gonna go ahead and basically utilize a ring terminal. You'll see a lot of capacitors just have two posts, no display. You can just utilize a ring terminal, double stack it, go right to your amp. So Alan, go ahead and connect that positive lead to our amplifier. But before we do that, Brennan, we're gonna go ahead and ground our amplifier to our table car. That would be a great idea because you definitely don't want to pop your Pico fuse on your Pioneer radio. No, you don't. So now we're gonna go ahead and connect our power to our amplifier to our capacitor. Now on this particular cap, guys, I, like I said before, and Alan has, uh, the, the distribution block is obviously built in for power and ground, uh, which means basically you could, in theory, ground your amplifier at the cap. Um, and then go off the cap to the chassis, et cetera. I always recommend it, and what I've learned in the past is definitely ground the two components separately to reduce any chance of noise within your system, especially if you're using a capacitor on a four channel or a mids and high amp, which you really won't do. You'd be utilizing it mainly for a mono block or a sub amp. Now that you pretty much have a better idea of how the connections are made on a capacitor, I do want to point out one thing, although this isn't completely accurate because this is a table car, not a vehicle you typically would obviously want to have a fuse holder in line from the battery going to your cap. So it's always recommended to protect the power wire running from the battery to the back of the car. Just in case there's a short, it will prevent that and it will pop the fuse and not burn your vehicle down. Exactly, and if the run coming off the capacitor is extremely long as well, as a precaution, you can also install an inline fuse there. Um, obviously, per manufacturer recommendations, they want it to be as close as possible to the amplifier that it's powering. Uh, obviously to be the most efficient. Many of you guys actually may use a capacitor on like a monoblock amplifier to try to stabilize your voltage uh, for voltage drops or try to stop dimming lights. But you may not know that when capacitors were first introduced to car audio, they were really designed to filter out any uh, unwanted AC ripple. And basically what that is, is when the alternator is charging, it creates unwanted AC current ripple and your battery actually is trying to, is the main source of a filter. And sometimes your battery can't filter out all that unwanted AC ripple. So what they would use is a capacitor like this to, fil to be a secondary filtration device to clean up any unwanted noise in the power line. So I can give you an example. Uh, a long time ago, we did a system in an M5 and no matter what we did, um, we had engine noise. It had nothing to do with a bad RCA or anything like that. Or... Uh, we swapped equipment out, grounds were solid, but for some reason we couldn't get rid of any noise, uh, the noise at all. So I actually made a call to an industry veteran, his name is Larry Fredericks, and he told me the only way to get rid of it is to use a uh, half a farad cap and uh, put it in line, and obviously that would be something that would filter out that extra uh, AC ripple that that vehicle more than likely has and sure enough that's what we did and the problem was solved so pretty much I would recommend using a capacitor as a filtration device not necessarily something that's going to fix your voltage 
issue that you may have. Yeah, exactly. I uh, definitely agree with Alan on that one. I think we've even used them in the past on test benches to prevent pops, on and off pops off our test bench or voltage peaks or spikes in general. Uh, but overall, I think that would be the most beneficial use for a capacitor in general um, if you're looking to, to add that to your system. Yeah, I know some guys like the way these look because they're kind of, they incorporate them into their install and they like the, the voltage display. Uh, they like to use the distribution block built into it. Um, but this won't really completely solve any of your voltage issues that you have. Chances are you're gonna need to upgrade your battery and your alternator. But this can be a great addition as a filtration device to clean up any unwanted noise generated from the alternator that the battery is not filtering out. Exactly, so hopefully this video helped you out guys. We really do appreciate you watching our videos and subscribing to our channel. Also make sure that you throw some more comments down below for us to answer for you. And the ones that I wanna see is what do you guys think about our table car? Yeah. All right guys, well this is Brendan. I'm Alan, subscribe, comment, watch more awesome videos like this. We'll see you next time.